In the last video, we went over lights, custom windows, UV mapping your 3D model, plus tons of other helpful tips to help you get your 3D model in game. So I recommend you go watch that first and then come back to this video. As we in game any 3D model you find, these are the final steps that I use to make my mods. Make sure to stay to the end of the video where I will have a template that you can download to actually get started with this. Ah. At the end of the video, I'll have that link for you guys. And without further ado, let's get into the bread and butter of this tutorial, where my goal is to help you not stress out about putting your 3D model in game. This tutorial is going to be more for personal use rather than for ModHub, because ModHub has a very lengthy process to get any mod on there. <laughs> So to get things started, I've been building this outside of my mod template. So it's got its own folder in a random blender folder that I made. And I need to make sure that all the textures are relatively close to the i3D. So I'm going to actually open that up with a text editor and make sure that I don't have any textures that are reaching far off into my computer into some random folder. And we'll just scroll all the way up to the top and we'll be able to easily tell. You know, if you're looking at this list here, if you don't see anything crazy like program x83 in this folder, you know, everything should be just the texture name or maybe a folder that says textures. Depends on how you build your, your mod, but I like to make sure that those textures there are in the right place. And they are, so let's export this bad boy out into the template. Export selection with files. And I actually don't have a textures folder inside of this template, so I'm going to have to go back through here and just create one really quick, which is perfectly fine. And we're going to export this i3D into there with the textures and then import it into our template from that i3D. Now we're going to open up our template i3D here. And this whole mod should work perfectly when you put it in game. You'll get a few errors that say index. It's very clear which ones need to be taken out. But we're going to import in our i3D that we exported, which our truck here. Once we get that loaded up, we'll be able to start placing some of these nodes. Because we have to remember that every single item inside of this template i3d is already coded to the xml so when you're adding items you're going to want to be real careful where you put them if you haven't watched my scenograph video i'll put that up right now in the cards go watch that and you'll get what i mean the first thing i want to do when i load it in is adjust the main dynamic rigid body collision to the model because i believe i made this template off of the lizard truck so it's a little smaller than this truck so that's basically what we're going to do right now is duplicate it, remove everything out of it, change it to a static. The reason we change it to a static is then it allows us to be able to transform it, move the little gizmo back and forth and adjust it. We're going to get it all nice and placed perfectly where it needs to be. Once we like where it's at, we are going to use the freeze transformations function. If you cl click on the object over in the scenograph, you'll be able to activate the freeze transformations once you get it in the spot that you like. And because all these dynamic models need to be 0, Y, and 1 on the scale 2 and 3, you need to make sure those are zeroed out. Once you have it zeroed out, you'll be able to copy and paste into it, and it should be identical. We'll change our camera here, because you can't delete that first compound without your camera. Move our new collision up to the top and start adding to it. We'll click on here where it says visuals. And this is pretty safe to put whatever you want in there. And you can code up future things in there. But the visuals doesn't mess up any coding if you copy and paste your 3D model into there. Now I do want you guys to understand that what I say is not gospel of modding. This is just me playing around for a very long time and trying to share that with you. So over the next few moments, I'm going to spend some time renaming these transform groups and organizing this mod because I know one of you is going to open it up and be like, how did you do this? Well, sir, I copy and pasted my body individuals, got it placed how I wanted it there. That's how I did this. Next up, we got the glass. I don't think I have it named glass to transform group. So we're going to do that real quick just to keep it nice and organized. We're going to copy it or cut it and then paste it into our visuals under our body. And in future video, we're going to fine tune the rear door and actually make a moving part. That could be a whole 20 minutes on its own. So for the time being, I'm actually just going to delete a good chunk of this. It's going to cause some errors if I don't mess with it in the XML, but 
we'll deal with that then. It's nothing detrimental. I am going to keep the back child collisions, though, because it can be quite useful. We can add that to our tailgate. I want you to keep in mind that anytime you're diving into a scenograph and deleting chunks of it and replacing it, you are going to cause some errors because this has to match up with the XML. It's it's like a like a legend for a map and the XML thinks this is one way and it's not, it's going to get very confused. But I will teach you about that because I'm going to go through and skim out the lights. We already have our own lights, so we're going to take out those visuals and inject our lights in there. They're already placed, so no hard parts about that. We are going to have to code those up, though. That's going to be a whole, whole section on its own as well. Man, this is going to turn into a long, long time of building a truck, but that's why making mods takes some time. We got all of our lights pasted in there. Now I'm going to delete this transform group that's on the outside of the main compound and hit save. Always hit save. But you only want the one component, the one object, otherwise the game will throw an error at you. Now here's our rear door. It is, oh, it's going to be all good once we get this bad boy all coded up. One of the nice things about this truck template, it's a lot of click and control B and then click again. Basically, you're going to select a transform or an object. We're going to press control B and then we're going to place it where we want. In the case of these wheels, which I'm going to change this for the original template I upload for you guys, but uh, they will be zero instead of rotated. But we're going to start off by clicking on our first wheel report. These already have a drive node, everything installed, and they come with the stock truck wheel. I used control B to place the tire, and I'm actually going to go through and copy the translate X and all those little the X, Y, and Z, and paste those into the left one, and then just put a negative. And now with this back wheel, I like to place it where the front tire is, copy the translate numbers, and then move it so it's on the right uh, X plane. And I basically do the same thing. I move the rear tire to where the, the rear left tire is, and then I just hit a minus where the numbers are so it goes directly on the other side. Because if your model is symmetrical, this will work out great. If it's not symmetrical, you're going to have to hand place each one of these tires. Now these license plates are coded up so we can easily just control B those to let's just say the center of the mod right now. After that we're going to click on the default lights where it says front light low and high beam. We're going to make sure these are in a place where our lights on this mod would be at and I am fortunate because I'm making a truck they're in the relatively same spot as a normal truck would have lights except for these interior screens we might have to place those it just lights up the interior obviously by the name moving on to our backlights you will notice here that it has another light inside of it so when the game goes to call this light you only have to index it once because it'll activate both lights and so we have to place the the, the parent first and then the child and we'll move on to our turn blinkers, which it has the same thing. It has a front left, which is the main one, the parent. So we'd want to place that one first. And then we'll click on back left. And go to where my blinker is there. And then click on that one. So anytime we activate the left turn, those will flash. And the same thing with the right blinker. Now these are just the lights that reflect on the ground and that you can see. These are not the static shaders that we're going to make glow using uh, some coding here in a little bit. And if we activate view lights, we can actually see where these lights are facing. I just assumed that they were like a normal truck, which makes it easy. When using this template, it's a lot easier because this reverse light, for example, is already coded up. You just need to place it in the i3d where you want your reverse lights to show up and on this model i happen to have some reverse lights right on the side door panels so i'm going to go through and just click each one of those i click the parent first and then the child and then we have our indoor camera you don't want to view this camera you want to just move it like this inside of the editor uh, because it has certain rotate properties that give you your normal camera when you load in game the camera raycast node is used in the vehicle XML to determine the offset of the vehicle 
from the camera. This information is used to determine how the camera should be positioned when the vehicle is being driven. We're going to want to have the shadow box around where the player is going to be sitting and then the exit point make sure it's to the left or right. You can put it wherever just make sure it's not inside the model. Now we're going to play around with the exhaust and placing it a little bit up here. We're going to make sure our local mode is selected and then we'll control B this transform group here and we're going to want that green facing towards where we want the exhaust to go. So I just rotated it and make sure it's centered. And because I'm going to want to have a second one, I'm actually going to duplicate that. Move it over to the other side so I can have dual exhaust. Nice. Now we'll take a look at the collisions here. And because it's a truck, I'm really lucky that a lot of them are going to be the same kind of shape that the last truck was. And if you're making a truck as well, this template would work perfect for you. Now we want to make sure when we resize these that we freeze transforming them, but don't do the translate. That really throws off where it is. You just want to do the scale. So making the back of this bed here, I'm obviously going to need to raise and lower that and may need to resize it a little bit. So following my instructions on how to scale and reset these collisions, go around your model or your truck, whatever you're working on, and reset all the scaling now. Make sure it's all nice and hunky-dory where if you put a log somewhere, it'll fall off nicely into the bed. Now we're going to start digging into the cabin and start playing around with like the player node. And first off, the steering wheel. Let's place the steering wheel. Now I need to build some parts in here that like a tube that goes from the dash to the steering wheel. But for the time being, we're just going to place the steering wheel in a position that the player could grab it, which that looks about good. Now I don't have any of these gauges 3D modeled up, but we are going to leave them in the model just because it's already coded in the XML and we're going to skip on down to the character targets such as the player skin. This is where your butt needs to be and then you got your left foot and your right foot. As we control B our way through this mod, we'll move on to attacher joints now. Obviously, we're going to have a trailer in the back. We don't have a model to go with it, but we will put the hookup point back here for right now. We're going to skip the semi because it doesn't have a semi hook on it, but it does have some connections. AI, don't need to mess with that. Now we get into our mirrors. These, we're going to have to make some custom mirrors later on. So unfortunately, these ones are going to have to go except for our center one. Our center one we might be able to keep. But if not, inside of the 3D model, we have some mirrors on it already. We just got to do the whole sh secret shenanigans and get it imported into the mod. This template already has tension belts installed. So all we really have to do is make sure where we want to strap stuff down is inside that box. And then we're going to individually place each tension belt right now. So I do a control B on the parent node and then I will place it. And then we'll go to the second one and I'll copy the translate information and then paste it and then be able to move it where I want to. And I think this should go right about the center of the bed. And then we'll look at its child and make sure that it goes to the other side. And we didn't grab the first one's child. So let's make sure that goes all the way to the edge. With this last one here, we're going to end up copying our first one and stretch it over. I like to get exact measurements, so we'll put that in there. Now those tension belts should spawn perfectly right there. So now we're at the very bottom of the scenograph and honestly, let's throw it in game. Let's try it. Let's make sure that this light is not there and the main components, the only thing in the scenograph hit save. And we're going to open our mod up in the game and see what kind of errors we're going to get. So if you've watched any of my previous videos on the mod disk, you should be pretty familiar with what I'm doing right now as I'm going through and giving it a, a name and a handful of other properties. So I know this is the mod I've been working on. Next, I open up the vehicle XML and kind of do the same thing. Give it some naming, uh, go through and double check that I'm going to be pointing at the right i3d and I'm not going to change a whole lot right now but I am going to uncomment this because I know this is going to give me a big error but I want to show you how simple this is to get this 
in game we're gonna have some errors but what a perfect chance to go through those errors with you so using the template we throw it in game here we click on it and we see the errors that it gives us now I'm actually gonna copy all these errors out to another XML document and then walk through each one of those errors with you as most of these errors just have to do with our lights that we deleted it can't find them anymore and a moving door a couple other little small things that we're gonna be covering in the next video guys because in this one I'm gonna get you started on the right track but you're gonna end up having to open up your i3d and your vehicle XML inside your i3d each one of your lights is gonna have what's called an index path and you're gonna to need to replace those inside of your XML the next video I cover is gonna go in way depth it has to do with some coding so make sure that you watch the what is XML video on my channel so you're up to speed when we get to that part. Thanks for watching and make sure to check the bottom of the description for that mod template that I teased you about earlier in the video.